I am continuing my video series on the Grand Canyon. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Academics say these maps are false, because the terrain is not as we know it today. They don't consider that the land may have changed through disasters that so many of the myths talk about. I suspect these cities were bombed with rock-melting weaponry. The bombings created large lakes, craters, and canyons. One example. Old maps show there was no Lake Michigan, and no Lake Air. Instead, we find a long and wide river where now we have lakes. Something colossal happened for this river to be turned into the Great Lakes. The lakes start appearing on maps in the 1600s, along with a sudden emptiness in the Midwest and Northwest. Tontontiac was wiped out. We can surmise that the disaster occurred some time before 1650. Maps from 1650 show the Tontontiac region partially flooded, separating California from the rest of the country. The Great Lakes began developing but did not yet have the shape they have today. Tontontiac is no longer mentioned here because it's underwater, and Abacus Granada has turned into a general region called Grenade. Some maps also say Nueva Granada, a hint to the old Granada. Between 1630 and 1650, some maps showed the old world, and some showed the new world. A 1630s map showing the old world, with Tontontiac and Murata still intact. Judging by available maps, the shift probably happened in the 1580s or 1590s, as I could find no maps of the New America before that. It's noteworthy that there have been engravings made in error that say Columbus discovered America in 1592, rather than 1492. This is from the 1652 Novatocious Terra Morbus Geographica H. A. Hydrographica Tabula. An innocent mistake. I'm not sure. The war on old America seems to have ended in the 1580s. After this time, most new explorers and settlers arrived in the Americas. Apart from Columbus, we don't hear of many settlers arriving between 1492 and 1592. This is a 1500s map that shows North America may have been completely flooded at one point. Notice the mass of land at the upper right side of the map, in the Pacific. According to the Hopi, this is where the Kingdom of Lemuria was. The Hawaii Islands are the last remains of that kingdom, they say. This is a hand-sketched recreation of a late 1500s map by cartographer Matthias Quad, for easier readability. This is not the untamed wilderness of primitive barbarians we were shown in the movies. Pre-Columbian America has clearly defined regions and cities. The map tells many stories and solves more riddles than can be discussed in this video, fodder for future research. We see Tontontiac, Granada, Septum Sita, Savola. On the east coast we see Norumbega, the old name for Washington, D.C., as previously discussed. There's the ancient kingdom of Hochelaga. Hochelaga is a mixture of German, Hoch, meaning high, and Latin Italian, Laga, meaning lake. Nobody would mix these languages today. Lago de Canibas is another mix, but I don't wish to veer off topic for too long, so I'll leave that for you to solve. Tontontiac. Where would we have to dig to find its remains or ruins? My best guess is, Lake Mead, Arizona, Nevada. Why? According to a history book titled Cardo Bibliography of the Grand Canyon, the indigenous name for Colorado River was Tatontoke, or Tatontiac. Tatontiac flu, plus is the German word for river, is today's Lake Mead, so, the city of Tatontiac would be around where we find Hoover Dam today. Lake Mead has seen the emergence of formerly submerged ruins, due to the water drying up. The ruins are now called St. Thomas and described to the Mormons, but I have my doubts. In 1925, ruins around St. Thomas were ascribed to the Pueblo Indians. The newspaper article from April 27, 1925, titled Ruined City of Giants is Baird, discusses the discovery of a prehistoric Indian town in Nevada, that is believed to be 2,500 years old. The article paints a vivid picture of this lost city, referred to as Pueblo Grande, which was once home to an ancient civilization in America. The discovery took place near St. Thomas, Nevada, an area believed to have been the site of Pueblo Grande. Excavations in the area revealed evidence of this being the largest prehistoric settlement in the Western Hemisphere. 
The article highlights that the civilization was highly developed, with advanced agricultural practices, pottery, and architectural techniques. The artifacts uncovered, including geometric designs, weapons, and tools, suggest that the people who lived there were sophisticated and well-organized. A particularly intriguing aspect of the discovery is the mention of a race of giants. Skeletons measuring over 7 feet in height were found, leading to speculation about a vanished race that once inhabited the area. The article draws comparisons to other famous archaeological finds, like the tomb of Tutankhamen in Egypt. The reference to giants is interesting. I recall an old map of America, in which the widened out region of the west and north is referred to as a land of giants, no-go territory. I was unable to find this map again, a reminder of how important it is to save evidence offline. Were the giants the target of this war of destruction? Yes, I realize the Hulky story says that peaceful folk were the target and the destroyer was the evil queen of Atlantis. But just because one book and one Hopi elder say that doesn't make it true. Just because I shared the story doesn't mean I fully buy into it. It could be misdirection. This 1500s map labels Granada as a metropolis, which means capital city. The sentence says in Latin, Abacus capital city stolen, now Granada. We learn here that the even older version of the city was called Abacus, but that it was stolen by people who renamed it Granada. If I am correct about Pontontiac being at Lake Mead, then Granada, not to be mistaken with Granada in Spain, must be where we today find Phoenix, Arizona. One river flows north from the Gulf of California, and another eastward. The northward river is Colorado River, Tontontiac, the eastward river is today called Gila, and flows through Phoenix. Granada is often shown on top of this river. And what about Grand Canyon, Flagstaff and Sedona? That's the area of the legendary Seven Cities, the Septum Sita. Grand Canyon is a place where seven cities, modeled after the seven stars of the Pleiades, were bombed to smithereens. The seven cities are the stuff of ancient legends. This is why most places in the Grand Canyon are forbidden to go to, and why rumors of strange artifacts and discoveries abound. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 3.